Hey everybody, it's time for a new Game Picker video and today it's mostly about the PlayStation 2. Uh, yes, mostly. I got five games here in total and also a package just arrived. So we're going to open up this one uh, together. Uh, kind of curious what the status of these games. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I know which games are in here. They are not PlayStation 2. Um, but yeah, the condition is maybe the biggest question mark for me. Uh, considering the price that I paid for the two games. But yeah, the stack of games here for the PlayStation 2, the condition, well, they are actually very amazing. So I will focus a little bit more on that. Uh, normally I show like the condition and uh, yeah, show if the manual is in, in here uh, or in there. Uh, but yeah, this time around, oh man, um, they, they look stunning. And uh, I think that kind of should be shown here. Um, I'm not sure if I will add like gameplay footage for every game that I show a little bit on a time constraint today, uh, but I do want to, you know, uh, provide like a video uh, for the Saturdays. But yeah, with that said though, let's just get started and talk about the games and show the condition. The first one that I want to talk about is Forbidden Siren 2. Uh, this is uh, a very good survival horror game. Uh, a while ago I was able to pick up um forbidden siren one and i do have forbidden or siren 3 on a playstation 3 i think that one is just called siren but that was the uh that one is only released like physical uh, as a physical edition in uh the pol regions but just only digital in ntsc regions but yeah forbidden siren 2 uh yeah as you can see um it looks super good uh it is in a very clean case um one thing that stands out to me though with this case, and this is the game that I would say is the worst condition of <laughs> all of the other games that I'm about to show you. Um, I think they swapped around the case because this is one of them without the uh, manual card holder. And sometimes these cases uh, feel a little bit like flimsy. Um, I think it's just uh, the amount of like plastic or material that's being used when uh, these cases were made uh they feel a little bit lighter but yeah man just look at this manual the manual looks very good and the the disc as well uh can i actually show the disc uh because yeah it, it is again it is just looking very good uh i don't know if this shows up but well, you know there you go uh there you see something but uh yeah you definitely have to shine some heavy light on it uh, but yeah, when you look at it from top, it is very good. And again, this is the worst condition of the five games that I'm about to show. And i um, very happy that I was able to get Forbidden Siren 2. And yeah, uh, for PlayStation 2, uh, I always say like I'm not heavily collecting for the PlayStation 2, but I do have like a list of games that I just really want to have in my collection and actually play. Uh, I love horror games and... The thing that always stands out to me with Forbidden Siren uh, or just the Siren games in general is just the yeah the aesthetics. Um, I think the PlayStation 2 is like a perfect fit for horror games just because there's some noise going on, like the texture work. It's kind of photorealistic, but still, yeah, uh, kind of, I don't want to say like low poly, but uh, it's low res. It's, you, you can kind of see like the realism, but also... Uh, Again, it's not, so that kind of makes it, to me, a little bit more freaky. And with the Cyan games, like the, the sound design is just absolutely fantastic. So combined, like with the different aspects and factors combined, um, I just feel like it kind of nails it. It, it kind of nails the, the aesthetics for like a horror game. And uh, yeah, that, that's what I love about like the horror games on the PlayStation 2. And that is why I'm collecting these. The next one, uh, I didn't know much of it, uh, but I really wanted to pick it up because uh, I just like the, uh, the the franchise a, a ton. It is Mega Man X8. Uh, now I do have like the most experience from the NES Mega Man games, of course. Like I own all of those, uh, all six of them. Uh, I I really love the NES Mega Man games, and I'm not too familiar with the X games. Um, 
I played maybe the one on the Super Nintendo. Is that just called Mega Man X? I think it is because sometimes I'm just really mistaken with Mega Man X on the Super Nintendo. If it actually is like 10. But it is not 10. It's just Mega Man X. Uh, am I making sense? <laughs> I'm not sure. But yeah, this one. It just looks brand new. Look at this. The manual just... Everything looks so clean. Let's, let's let's take out this manual. Let's 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 give it a little bit of time to to breathe. Let's take it all in uh, because that that this is why I love having like the manuals in there as well. Just because of sometimes you do have some amazing art in there, but this one it just seems like it has never been opened. You know, uh, there's not much art going on in this manual, but. Uh, there's one game in here that has like a ton of art in it. Um, oh yeah, you do see some like of the, the, the bosses. But yeah, from what I could gather, like Mega Man X, uh, you, you are able to play with some uh, different characters and like uh, you can find like upgrades and I think that's maybe like what the X series like focuses on. Again, not too familiar with it, but I wanted to try out one of these games, and this uh, this one is not too expensive, and uh, it just seemed like a, a proper one to pick up. The next one, oh, this one is in a super good condition. Uh, uh, what can I say about it? Uh, it's a fighting game, and uh, I, I, I'm speechless. Uh, because of a couple of reasons, maybe, uh, okay, uh, let's, ju let's just show it and then actually talk about it. <laughs> it is Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and look at this one. It's new. It, it looks fantastic. Uh, I don't know how, like this definitely came from a collector and uh, same goes for like the Mega Man X8, uh, the manual of this one also looks like brand new like i don't see anything on the manual that stands out to me like oh this has been used uh let's just get it out of the box and actually see if there's some art going on in here yeah you do have like the the, the move list uh that's kind of nice especially for me because i'm terrible at fighting games and um there, there's not much uh, art going on in here but uh I'm not going to show the disc. The disc is also in a, in a very good condition. But let's just uh, look at this one again. Uh, it is super minty. It is just so good. But yeah, I really wanted to pick this one up. Uh, for a while, I was really thinking about like oh, collecting all the, the Marvel games on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 2. I kind of forgot that goal, but... Uh, also, there are not that many Marvel games left for me to collect. And this one, uh, I was thinking, uh, you know, I should pick this one up. I know the collection is out now. Um, and that is probably the, 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 the best way to play it. Because the PlayStation 2 version is maybe not the best one. Because the animations are lacking uh, certain frames. And I don't know. Uh, listen. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, never played it, uh, but I just really wanted to check it out. I like I like this a lot. Uh, from what I've played, it looks awesome to me, but I don't have anything to compare it with. Uh, when I pick up that collection, uh, yeah, I will probably see like the, the big difference uh, between like the PlayStation 2 version and the, um, I don't know, the arcade port, I guess. Um, but still, man, how could I pass this one up? Um, also, I did not pay a lot for this one. I I want to say around like 30 or 35. Not more than 35. So how could I say no to that? Um, the price might like drop a little bit because of that, uh, you know, that collection. But uh, anyway, uh, again, it looks brand new. And the cover art is already fantastic. Um... So it would even be like a very nice display piece. Just look at the colors, man. Uh, again, already said I would linger on a little bit more on the condition this time around. Uh, because I just don't want to, like, hey, quickly show it and, hey, uh, go to the next game. Because, uh, okay, man, look at this. Marvel vs. Capcom 2. 
again. It looks it looks brand new. How? The next one, also a very good condition. It is Gradius for the PlayStation. These are all for the PlayStation 2, but this is Gradius for the PlayStation 2. <laughs> Don't say it again then. Uh, but yeah, Gradius, just look at this. Also, brand new. Very happy with this one. Just look at this condition again. Um, and yeah. Uh, also, the manual uh, looks pristine. Uh, and the disc as well. I'll, I'll show the disc. I think this is a blue disc. Yeah. Uh, rarely see like a blue disc. But, uh, yeah, there's some dust on it. But uh, that, that that's about it. Yeah. Uh, it's always good to see, cool to see like a blue disc. Um, when did they change like the blue disc into like the regular discs? Uh, I'm not too sure. But yeah, I, what I just like about this manual is the um, how everything is just like the in the the like in a different art style, uh, but still like it, it is trying to be like in the art style of like radius, just the uh, uh, just the, uh, the the design. And uh, yeah, you, you do have like this odd page. I was like, what is going on here? Like, am I missing a page? But it is actually a small poster that is like double-sided. Yeah, I'm very glad that it's still in here. Uh, so that's cool. So the, uh, yeah, the other side is just, again, like it's an odd page, but you know, if you remove it, you have like two two sides, but yeah. Just like this, uh, the art here. That is why having like these manuals is just so awesome because uh, sometime, someone spends uh, like a ton of time in designing this one and uh, it's it's very cool to see. But yeah, Gradius, um, a swap, shoot em up. Let's call it shoot, shoot em up. Uh, that's how I always refer to these type of games. And um, I played a ton of like Gradius on the Super Nintendo. Besides playing like R-Type, but yeah, the Super Nintendo one is probably my favorite one. Or I might have played like a ton of the Game Boy one. Uh, I remember owning the play the Game Boy one and playing that one a lot. Uh, really not being able to see like anything uh, like uh, the details with the light. Uh, but still, it was enjoyable to play. Now, from what I could gather, I never played this one. Is that uh, this one is like di difficult as hell. I really like the shoot 'em up games, uh, but somehow, yeah, I talked about it a while ago with the, the death smells for the Xbox 360. That kind of showed me like, oh, I, these are still enjoyable. Like I played it in the past, but um, yeah, somehow I stopped playing these type of games. And yeah, when I hear like it's that it, that, that this one is super difficult, uh, I'm like, ah, oh, I I can deal with a little bit of challenge, uh, but. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this one. Uh, uh, what I'm getting at is like, I'm not sure if I have the patience to learn uh, a game like this because uh, that's kind of like the very cool thing about a game like this. If it's super difficult that you really need, need to learn like uh, what enemies are, uh, you know, going to appear and uh, how to fight like the, the bosses and just don't die, like don't get hit. Um, so I kind of like that idea, but I don't think I have the time and the patience to learn it. But uh, yeah, definitely want to check it out. And uh, man, again, this condition could not pass it up because it it is looking absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and the final game of the stack. Woo! Um, I think I got very lucky with this one. The condition of this one is also very, very nice. It is Castlevania. Curse of Darkness. And just look at this. A uh, little bit of Dutch. Uh, like, if I am able to avoid Dutch on the, the back cover, like, I will go for that one. But I couldn't, again, could not pass this one up. And, um, again, it's... Uh, can't complain. But I, I like this bit. Like the skulls over here. I like that art, man. Uh, not sure who that is. Yeah, the manual is also in a very good condition. Again, oh man, the skulls. I like skulls. Uh, 
on concept art. I, I don't want to have like a skull <laughs> collection. Ooh, this one also has like a poster. Uh, check this out, man. Oh, man, that, that is awesome. See, and that is why manuals are so cool. It is double sided. Uh, so let's check. If we can check out the, the other side as well. It would be cool to have something like this in a full frame. Uh, just a, a like a bigger poster. Uh, some custom art in here. Yeah. See, th this this is like a perfect example like why why you want to have like a manual. Got some uh, background story for the the characters. Uh, are there anything like about uh, the the monsters? No, we do have like the the poster. But yeah, sort of like this. Uh, I always dig this, like the uh, showing the items. Um, that's very cool. What was the other game? Uh, I think King Kingsfield for the places you want has like the uh, the enemies in the uh, the manual as well, and it's just uh, very cool to check that out. And uh, also maybe the items and uh, just this just kind of reminds me of like uh, Legend of Zelda, like those manuals. But yeah, this is cool, man. Love it. Very cool to see. But yeah, Castlevania Curse of Darkness. Uh, the game, I never played it, but I played the first one. I know that people are not always very fond of like the Castlevania games on the PlayStation 2. But from my memory, I really like the first one. Um, it is just called Castlevania over here. But I think the original subtitle is like Lem Lemnant of Innocence. Uh, something about um, something like that, but yeah, Curse of uh, Darkness. Um, never played it, but uh, from what I've played, um, it seems also very cool. I just like Castlevania. Um, not really trying to collect like all the Castlevania games, but when I see them uh, and I don't own it, I kind of want to pick it up. I, I just really like Castlevania. I, I I like I like it a lot. Uh, the first one is my favorite on the NES. Um, it, it is just such a very compact game. Uh, kind of don't want to say like easy to complete, but you know, it will take like half an hour or 45 minutes or so. It is just very fun, but I also like more the uh, Metroid esque uh, Castlevania games. Uh, so, yeah, very, uh, yeah, very happy that this is now uh, part of the collection. And that means that I do own both Castlevania games now. And um, they're just fun. You know, um, they are a little bit different than the usual Castlevania games. Uh, I think it is fair to compare this. They are somewhat comparable to the uh, Nintendo 64 games. So, uh, yeah. Man, just look at this. Uh, don't want to drop them all. but So, here we have like Castlevania. Again, that cover art. Fantastic. So, Marvel vs. Capcom. Gradius. And a Mega Man X 8. Also very cool. And a Forbidden Siren 2. Should check out one of these games uh, in October. That, that, that is a perfect timing with uh, the Halloween. Play some horror games. Maybe do that on a live stream. Who knows? If I have the time. So those are the games that I've picked up uh, for the PlayStation 2. And uh, yeah, let's not forget about the, the package. And we're going to open up this package right now and see what is inside. Ooh. So let's open up this package and I'm just very curious about like the condition of the games that are in here. And also, even if the games are in here, uh, yes, <laughs> I do think there, there's something in here, but um, you never you never know. Seeing the box, uh, yeah, this deal just felt a little bit sketchy, and uh, I, I, I'm not sure what the deal was with the seller. Uh, sometimes you, or in most cases, you never know what the deal is with the, some sellers online. The price just didn't seem correct based on the price for one of these games, and I will talk about that. Uh, yeah, when I uh, open up this package, and even uh, you know, um, if there's no game in here, then uh, it, it's gonna be like a whole different story. Uh, not gonna, not doing this like very uh, clean and professional. Be careful with waving around like a, a knife like that. 
I don't want to damage this box because uh, they they purchased a new box and I I paid for the box. <laughs> I paid for the box. It's a weird thing. Uh, sometimes the sellers do want to send their games just to regular mail in an envelope, and often that 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 works out. But also I have some uh, occasions where it doesn't work out at all, and uh, uh, sometimes the the games were missing. Well, at least uh, they package it uh, correctly. Uh, there's enough like um, protection in there. Some people are very creative with the protection. Uh, yesterday I got a package and it was just filled with a cloth, like uh, small pieces of cloth. Um, seemed like a very expensive way to do that. But yeah, the the the, the odd thing. Okay, let's let's go over the the, the odd thing. So I was I, I saw a whole list of games and the, the price stood out for me with one of these games and it is a terrible game, uh, but it is a game that probably at some point I had to purchase and I saw the price I was thinking yeah let's just go for it and, and do it but yeah while chatting with the seller nothing personal it's just a chat so you yeah you don't know who you're talking to or uh, how they how they normally talk like with the chat you just don't kind of get like a good feeling of like the person that is actually uh, behind the, uh, the other uh, side of the, the chat but it just felt um some alarm bells went off like oh is this gonna be a scam or something because they didn't want to use like the regular payment methods and i had to transfer my money and uh, that's always like a um, iffy thing to do uh, but the price was rather low so i was thinking i will take the chance uh, because if you do it like in a different way from this website you don't have like any uh, buyer's protection uh, although buyer's protection is also a scam uh, because if uh, from the, the side that I ordered it from, if a game is fake, um, they don't deal with it. They don't care. Um, they don't care. Uh, first impression is good. Um, but yeah, there were some alarm bells going off and uh, I'm holding a game. So uh, it is not the expensive game that is in here. Um, but yeah, the first one. This is not exciting, uh, but they had this one as well. It's a rally championship for the GameCube. And uh, yeah, it seems to be in a very good condition. Uh, what is mud? What the hell is it? Mud sweat and gears. So I don't know much about like rally championship. There are a couple rally uh, racing games on a, on a GameCube. I, I like rally games. Um, I think my... Favorite one is Virelli 2 on the PlayStation 2. Just have like very fond memories of playing that uh, together with my brothers. And uh, yeah, oh, okay. Uh, you know, I, I take it back. Like the condition of this one looks uh, very good. That's uh, often my problem with the rally games on a GameCube. They are like lower priced, but often in, in a very bad condition. And uh, I was always thinking I will pick them up at a convention or... Uh, at least that I can actually check them out. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to check like the full uh, manual here. Uh, like, hey, there's some heart in there, of course, cars. It is not as fancy as the Castlevania one. The disc, I'm mostly curious about the disc. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is actually very good. I take it back. And again, uh, nothing against like the seller. Uh, like I said, it was just a chat and you never get like a good sense of the, the other person that's sitting at the other side. It's just a chat. But some alarm bells went off always when they ask like, hey, I'm not going to, uh, don't want to have like the payment via this way. I, I want it this way. And it's always like, oh, what what am I get, getting myself into? Um, but very happy with this one. Yeah, man. Oh, man. This is actually fantastic. For distribution outside the UK only. What a weird text on it. Uh, so that is SEI Games and Warthog. Yeah, it's a really game, man. Uh, it's a game that I don't own uh, for the GameCube. And um, still deciding if I'm going to go for that complete collection. Um, but I like really racing games. So that's why I picked it up. Pick this one up. 
uh, I think I made a very good deal. I take it all back. Let's remove the box. This is a terrible game. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's look at it first. Okay. I'm not going to look inside. But uh, yeah, they said that, that there's a manual. Okay, without further ado. Uh, I, I hate I hate the art. It's <laughs> Coco Cocoto. Kokoto platform jumper. Uh but yeah, this one is also in a very good condition. Look at this. I'm also very happy with this one. Did not expect this to happen at all. So different languages, uh English though, so that's good. So it's multi multi language. Let's check the inside. Ooh. Ooh. That's very good. Oh man. I hate the art. Uh, my apologies to the artist. Um, I think I hate it more because these games always stand out to me. Like you see it, you do have them also on the on the Wii. It's always this little dude, uh, and you you know this is like a budget title. Maybe there's some fancy art inside. Uh, let's. It's a thick manual, but I I, I think that has to do with all the uh, languages. So this insert in here is in here. Uh, it's a, still, it's a tick manual. Um, there's some art. Oh, I don't like the look of that. Look at the ba baggy dude. And we do have like shiny, fairy, and Nero, and Kokoto. Uh, Cocoteau est le plus ancien des cordiers de la marmite. Apologies. Uh, that is all the art. Uh, well, this is some GameCube controller art. Oh yeah. So, okay, this is actually um, very surprising. I'll, I will talk about the price in a, in a minute. Ooh. Yeah. Yes, this is good. Yeah, there are some micro scratches or some minor scratches that you don't really see. So that's all good. Lately with the GameCube titles, <coughs> one thing, apologies. One thing that I really do lately is check like the inner ring and to see if there's a crack or not. Uh, because that uh, that is actually, I don't want to say like quite common, but just be careful of that. Because I had like two or three games maybe in the, in the past that had like a small crack in here. Um, but yeah, this one, uh, yeah, it just looks okay. Uh, for this crowd, it is not something that we really need to check like here uh, in the power regions. Uh, but it's always all, uh, good to check it in the light to see if there are any scratches at the top. Uh, just hold it again, it's like a light. And then, ooh, is there something there? But there's nothing there. Just, just, just put it against like a, a bright light and you check if there are any scratches at the top of the disc. It will make your life that much easier. Uh, but yeah, so two games for the GameCube. Um, very, uh, I'm actually amazed. This, this, this turned out to be a fantastic. Uh, pickup video because uh, I was thinking, oh, this is not gonna be just as good as the other uh, places two titles with you know the condition, but this one feels very clean. Uh, the case itself, I will clean it up, but it just looks very clean and uh, very happy with. I never would have thought I would say like I, I'm very happy with this Coco Toe platform jumper. Um, listen, there are three. Um, if you want to know, there are three Cocoto games. Uh, I got the price charting here. So let's talk briefly about that. So this one, uh, no, so the three that are that you have on the GameCube uh, for the power region uh, is this one. Then you do have like Cocoto Kart Racer and Cocoto Funfair. And Funfair is the most expensive one. That one hoovers around like one hundred dollars. The card racer hoovers around like sixty-five dollars, 
and the jumper one uh, this is also a weird one hoovers are around like 47 dollars and that's the crazy part to me uh when you are going for a complete gamecube collection or any collection yeah there are games like these that you have to pick it up and they might be very fascinating to some extent because yeah it's not really shovelware but you kind of want to check it out kind of want to experience it but i don't think this is going to be fun but uh yeah it, this one is expensive now to be honest though um I'm gonna check the the. Ooh, what? So the uh, the last one that was sold was last month for fifty two euros. So let's change that in USD. Um, like the the forty eight seems a little bit steep, but you know I c I could see it go for that price, especially if it is in a very good condition, because also these games I often see them in a very bad condition. Before that, I see $41, $65, $31, $39, $52, $38, $40, $45, $50, $60, $70, $80, $90, $100, $120, $130, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140,
you know, to play these two games, they are all hits. Um, I would say, like, these are the games that I want to see, like, in my collection. Uh, you know, what they say, all killer, no filler. And I think this is all killer and no filler, if you ask me. And, uh, yeah, Kokuto and Rally Championship is maybe a little bit more like filler. Uh, but still games that I do want to maybe check out because, hey, maybe th maybe this is fun. Could be. Never played it. Could be fun. Hate this dude, though. I hate him. <laughs> that is all. Go that is going to do it. Uh, thanks all for watching. Um, really appreciate like the likes and the subscribes in the last couple of weeks. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time. Bye. Bye-bye.